this is a first law of thermodynamics type of problem where we can actually figure out what is the power of this turbine that's described here. So a turbine, a turbine has uh, this many kilograms per second of steam entering it. Uh, that is mass flow rate. So mass flow rate is 4.800. I put some extra significant digits into this question because it really is nice to hold four significant digits here. Uh, the inlet is higher than the outlet. So at this point, let's draw this turbine. And we typically draw a turbine kind of looking like this because as we take the energy away, as we take the energy away from this moving fluid M dot that's going in, there's M dot coming out. As we take the energy away by, by turning these blades in here, right? And, and in turn, turning this shaft, that's the purpose of a, of a turbine. Um, as we take the energy away and we, we convert it into mechanical energy to turn that turbine shaft, right? We take it from the fluid and we convert it into, into the shaft energy, omega. Okay, anyway, the inlet is um, 2.5 meters higher than the outlet. That tells me there is some potential energy in that fluid, a little bit of potential energy. So um, this uh, do, 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 this this height, this um, <clears throat> this height, wh whatever you want to do here for the equations, you can say Z one equals um, zero and Z two equals two point five zero zero meters. But basically, delta Z or delta D or whatever you want to call it, the distance is two point five zero zero meters. Okay, what else do we have going on here? The inlet velocity is this, the outlet velocity is that. So that means that this mass is flowing at a velocity of 132 meters per second in, and its velocity out is 327 meters per second. And it actually does lose heat. I always like to do heat in red for some reason. So let's show our heat energy. Um, it, this is not an insulated turbine. So we actually have some heat energy coming out here. And that is coming out at a rate. I'll use a small Q because it's a rate of 9.200 kilojoules per second. If that were just in joules and it were not a rate, everything here is in a rate. Um, and then I would I would put capital Q. All right, it's actually a Q dot because it's a rate. Uh, let's see, what else do we have going on here? So that is the heat loss. Um, it has some enthalpy at the input and some enthalpy at the output. So it's nice to know, nice to know those enthalpies. I'm not feeling like this is gonna be a really hard problem. It has enthalpy at the inlet. It has enthalpy at the outlet. Somebody has measured that. And it goes from 3127 to 2512. That's the kilojoules per kilogram of this fuel, of I mean, of this uh, fluid. Because it used to have a lot of enthalpy, which is sort of a measure of energy, a measure of randomness inside those poly, um, molecules. And it's gone from a lot of sort of measure of energy to less measure of energy. Well, where did the rest go? It went towards spinning this shaft, right? Uh, it it got turned into work, basically. Uh, work is what we put um, out of this system. Okay, so now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna solve this problem. And I can solve this problem by doing a first law energy balance, energy in, equals energy out. And the types of energy that we have are um, potential energy, kinetic energy, however you wanna write them, and uh, heat, heat, and there's work, and there's work. I like writing it like this so that you can see that it's the same thing just on either side. That's our first law energy balance and that's gonna work for every single system. Now, in this case, I can now substitute in, of course, you know, potential energy is 
um, the distance is mgh and so potential energy equals mgh or if you want to call it um, mg z in this problem because i just called these z now uh, and then kinetic energy equals one half mv squared um, but uh, what's going to happen is um, a lot of things are going to cancel out right so there's going to be mass in every single term and mass is going to cancel out from every term etc and what we're going to be left with is that for a turbine and I can make some videos to simplify this and show you how we get here. But for a turbine, basically, um, we, sorry, we're really putting work into, into this system from the fluid. So I'm going to put work in this direction. What we end up with really is some heat goes out and some work energy goes in. And that's going to cause the difference in enthalpy h2 minus h1 the difference in enthalpy plus it's going to um uh equal the amount that has been gained from um potential energy z2 minus z1 which is just the height it's just 2.5 meters and the change in um kinetic energy So if you sub in kinetic energy, potential energy into this equation, this is what you'll end up with. So let me just kind of show you what this is. This is change in enthalpy. Uh, this is this is a change in gravity, but basically potential. This is a potential energy. And again, mass canceled out because mass was in everything. Mass was, was multiplied by the H's and everything. Mass was in every term of this equation. So it canceled out. That's why potential energy looks a little different. And this is the change. This is um, delta potential, change in potential. This is the um, change in kinetic. So let's think about this intelligently then. What has happened is... Let me highlight this. What has happened is um, I, I I put some fluid through here. All right, that's good. That's why I built the turbine. And it has increased, it has put some work into these blades and has made this shaft turn, which is um, what I wanted it to do. But it also lost some heat energy. How did it do all that? It did it by giving up some enthalpy. It did it by giving up some potential energy and it did it by giving up some kinetic energy. All right, so that's why we, that's uh, that's the equation that we have got to at this point. And if we don't understand that, just comment below and I can show you how you can get from this equation to this equation. All right, so at this point, really what I wanted to point out is that it's a little bit hard, it's a little bit tricky to, um, kind of use all of these units. Um, and, and you just have to make sure that you have done all of the conversions properly and everything. So I don't want to substitute absolutely everything in, but I want to solve for this, for this um, uh, work. Because when I say, what is the turbine's power? That basically means how much work is gonna come out of this shaft. Well, how much work comes out of the shaft is how much work ended up going into that shaft. So if I just solve for work here, uh, then I will get to rearrange this equation. Or let me just leave it exactly how it is. And I would just be, well, this is negative. So this one is going to now be negative and this one's going to be positive and this one's going to be negative. And then I need to move, move my Q over and that would be minus Q. All right, now I can solve for work. So let me start substituting into this 
problem, uh, all of the values that are listed above so that you can see how the units work. So 2.0, um, 2, 2.50, uh, wait a second, let me do the first one. So yeah, I'm just gonna do this potential energy one first. The change would be 2.500 zero, zero meters times 9.81 meters per second squared. Make sure you're showing all of those units. Plus 132 squared, this is your velocity term, over two, because that's your change in velocity. Don't forget that this is a meter squared for this change in velocity here. Uh, meter squared per second squared, and don't forget that one half, so you do have to divide by two. Plus that change in enthalpy, that change in enthalpy was negative here, so it's going to become positive in my equation. 3127.4 is the difference in enthalpy in kilojoules per kilogram. And I'm subtracting the 9.200 kilojoules per second of heat that got lost. And as I'm crossing these things out then, I see that, let me just kind of describe it as units for the rest of, of this description. So what I'm going to get from here is I'm going to get a meter squared per second squared. What I'm going to get from here is also a meter squared per second squared. Good. And then what I'm going to get from here is going to be um, a kilojoules. I already have a kilojoules per kilogram, but what you're going to need to do is convert that into joules. So how many joules are in a kilojoule so that I can cross out kilojoules? Well, how many are there? There are 1,000 joules in one kilojoule. So you're going to have to multiply this this factor onto that term. And then you're gonna subtract your kilojoules per second. Oh, hang on. But you're gonna to have to multiply that one again by the same factor because it's in kilojoules per second and you wanna convert that To, um, <clears throat> hang on, this one was kilojoules per kilogram, and this one is kilojoules. This is, we want this in joules per, uh, joules per kilojoule, so that I get joules per second. All right, now continuing on just with the units, because this video is about how you're going to actually solve this problem. Uh, you can continue down with the actual numbers if you want to. This will give me meter squared per second squared. Then you'll get a, another meter squared per second squared. And then you'll get a, we have to remember what a joule is. We have to remember that a joule is a kilogram meter per second squared. So we have converted in here, and it if we kept that thousand, we get kilogram meters squared per second squared times kilogram. And then I'm gonna subtract that kilogram meters squared per second squared times kilogram and kilograms cross out. And I'm getting meters squared per second squared in these terms now, in each of them. So therefore W is equal to um, add up these two. All right, um, meters squared per second squared. 
And then I still have a 4.8 of the mass flow, right? Um, so this is my work. And then I have to remember that I, it all has to be multiplied by my mass flow rate. And if I multiply this by my mass flow rate, then I need to multiply it by 4.800 kilograms per second, which is going to get me my kilogram meter squared per second cubed. And sorry, joules kilogram meter squared per second squared. So since a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared, power is rate of energy. So it's energy over time, which is joules per second. And if a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared, and I divide that by a second, so times one over second, I get kilogram meters squared per second cubed. And a kilogram meter squared per second cubed is a watt. That is a watt. All right, so then my answer is now in watts. which is a watt, and now I can convert my watts, and I would probably want to express it in kilowatts because the number is actually pretty big. And there are 1,000 kilowatts in a watt, and that's what gives me our final answer of 2730 kilowatt, which is the answer to this problem. So I hope, for, I hope this was useful in both setting up a turbine question describing where the energy comes from in a turbine and working with the difficult units that you go through in a first law energy balance in order to calculate the power of a turbine.